Hello lovelies! Welcome back to another Glinda bubble dress making video. This week we are finally starting the bodice for Glinda's bubble dress. So full disclosure, I am currently waiting for some cotill to get here for the insides of this bodice. So in today's video, uh, we aren't going to actually work on the real bodice. We are going to pattern the bodice, make as many mock-ups as we need to make for the bodice, get started on the uh, timbre embroidery for the sequins on the bodice, and possibly make the sleeves. It's really just gonna depend on how long the timbre for the front and back of the bodice takes before I move on to the timbre of the sleeves. But like, that's the goal, like that would be great, but we'll kinda, we'll see what, we'll see what happens. Before we head on over to the table to discuss the plan of attack for this bodice, I just wanted to share with you all that a couple weeks ago I started a new Kofi goal for this gown to help raise money for the next 10 yards of bobbinet that I need to purchase to make the petals as well as the bodice and the sleeves. I have just enough for the bodice and the sleeves, but petal making will kind of be at a halt until I can get more after I've made the bodice. Um, I do have a Kofi goal and everybody that donates to the Kofi goal will get their name stitched out in the hem of the base skirt. And if you can't help out financially, that's totally okay. If you can just give this video a thumbs up, it honestly really helps trigger the algorithm to show this video to more people. So yeah, that would be really helpful. Now let's talk about our plan of attack for this bodice. All right, so here are some images of her bodice. I did a quick sketch. It is not cute, so we're not gonna focus too much on it. But basically I drew over the seam lines on her bodice. I actually have a really good idea of how to do the sleeves. So I might modify a pattern I already have in my stash. I might modify the same sleeve pattern that I've used for like four ball gowns now, which is what I used on my Sakizo Amethyst costume. We'll figure that out in a few minutes, but that I kind of have an idea of that. I right now want to just drape in cotton the base bodice and sew those pieces up and do a fitting over the corset to figure out placement of the sleeve, like where the sleeve will hit figure out placement of the bobbin lace because something that is very hard to see in these photos, um, but in some of my other photos, I, I have so many reference images, I'm only sharing a few each time with you all because I'll, I'll be really honest, it's overwhelming <laughs> how many photos I have. But um, the bobbin net is only in like, here, let me see if I can sketch it out, like places like this and then to the center seam. So like, even though there's a seam here and a seam here, the bobbin net, which is used to make all of the sequin, takes up less space. So what I have to do is essentially draft the whole bodice, figure out these seam lines, then cut it apart where I know the bobbin net is gonna go, put that on a separate pattern so that I have it, cause I will be listing these patterns at the end of this project. Um, but basically make that a separate pattern so that I can start transferring or transfer it to the bobbinet and get going on the sequins. I'm doing a live stream this Wednesday. In the time that you're watching this, it will have already happened, so I do apologize, but I'm doing a live stream and I would really like to start working on these sequins. Something else that I should mention is this is just one version of the, bo the bubble dress that all has this kind of neckline. I have seen the neckline be a little bit more of a heart shaped and I think that one's cute, but this is one that I keep seeing pop up and I think it'll look pretty flattering on me personally, so I'm gonna stick with this shape. We're not gonna worry too much about the construction on the inside for structure just yet. We're kind of just gonna try to nail down this top piece, nail down where the sequins are gonna go so that we can start getting the sequin stuff done. Some other things that are notable on this are, this is a lapped separating zipper that you can see right here. 
Um, I don't know how to do a lap to zipper, so we're gonna, I'm gonna try that for my first time. I'll probably do um, like another mock-up or like maybe do a practice lapped one. I don't know yet, but I did buy two yards of this bodice uh, fabric, so I'm not super worried about running out. I do have two of these different sized separating zippers left from making the corset, which is actually a nice happy accident. So if this one's too long, I can try this one if this one's too short and this is too long. I also have learned on this project how to separate the zipper so that like, or how to take out the teeth and make a whole new shorter zipper. So that's an option, which is super great. Something else just to note, there is gonna be piping. The question I have about this piping is the color match is so specific to this fabric. I'm wondering if they actually cover the spandex that they use for the piping with the bobbin net. So that might be something we look into doing, which means I need to start saving the skinny stra scra scraps, wow, words are hard, skinny scraps of bobbin net that I've been trimming off of the tops and the bottoms of the um, petals. So we'll see about that. For the sleeves, um, it's definitely bobbin net on top, and I am because of how lightweight it looks, gonna be using the organza that we dyed for the skirt base. Um, I might also try doing one with the actual fabric that's down here, but as you can see, the colors are still slightly off. They're not like the exact same, which confirms everything. The last thing that I was gonna say is here in the back, there's this like lovely little like bustleette piece. <laughs> that uh, you can see a split down the middle. Um, and it's just this really pretty piece that looks like a petal that has, um, you know, uh, sequins on the edges of it and then through the center as well, like here, 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 here. This, I'm making the choice to do in the embroidery tool. And I'm only doing it this way for this piece because I want to try the steam method, which we talked about last week, where I could steam it out once it's um before I take it off. But also because of the way that this looks, and this isn't the best photo of it, but there's other photos of these. The way that this looks, it looks like a different fabric altogether from the net, the bobbin net that's used here and on the petals. It also looks like a different fabric from basically everything else. And all of my research says that there are nine different fabrics used on this gown, and I only have eight. If I make it out of this, that is nine. Now, that could be a stretch, but like, or they could be talking about the cotill, but still. I'm gonna try it and see how it goes, but I think for today's video, what we're gonna focus on is getting the bodice drafted and mocked up and then solidifying the sleeve structure. I, like I said, like I have an idea of how to do that. Solidifying the actual bodice shape and like each bodice pieces and then the bobbin net pieces. So um, that is where we are for this. <laughs> um, I guess let's get to drafting. Okay, so this is kind of where I'm at right now with my pattern. I have a lot of adjustments to make once I get them down on the um, like on the paper. So what I'm gonna do now is just take these basic pieces and make some lots of adjustments and then uh, on paper and then use that paper to cut out a mock-up. So here's to hoping. There's a lot of things that are gonna change. So for example, this gap here, this piece is actually gonna get attached to this so that this is less 
princessy seam or whatever. Um, the the hem, this is all gotta get longer because I have a, a rather like long torso. So this is all gonna get at least an inch, if not more, added to it. That'll be on a fold. Um, this back won't, I don't think it's gonna drape as far as it did. I think I just got a little crazy. So, you know, just stuff like that, that's gonna get cleaned up and hopefully we'll have a mock-up. I'm not gonna finish that today because I have to start cooking in an hour because I have a, a thing tonight. So we're gonna just get this on paper, I think. And then tomorrow we'll make a mock-up. So we have a mock-up. Okay, let's talk about this. <laughs> it is very big. It's very big. Um, I, here I'll even turn around and show you. It is very big. So we need to take stuff in. So what I'm gonna do in like, I don't know, now is turn it inside out and start pinching and pinning and getting these to fit, getting this entire garment to fit. Cause it, it's just, it's extremely big. Like I said, in the back, very big. So that's the first thing that I need to do. Um, I think that once I sew up the pinned pieces that we fix, we can actually judge the sleeves. And then once we can judge the sleeves, we can start nailing down some um, pattern pieces and, and choices and, and options. I will say the length of this front panel is pretty great. I like it. It You can't, I'm, I am wearing the uh, corset that I made to go under this. We're gonna do the fittings on the corset. I think once I've taken this in, I'm gonna do the next fitting with the petticoat on so we can figure out if I need to make it longer. Cause remember, this is all with the half an inch allowance. So like, it's gonna actually get folded here. So I might have to add another quarter inch lengthwise to everything, top and bottom, which is like fine, that's easy, but I just need to know. So yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. All righty then. So with a lot of adjustments, like a lot of adjustments, I have finally gotten something that resembles a mock-up. There's two adjustments that I just didn't make that I will be making from this point to the next point, like to the paper point. Uh, these elastic pieces here, while they're great and they sit on my sleet shoulders okay, they're, in my opinion, slightly too loose. Like any movement, so like I can do that, but if I were to like do any too much movement, you see how they start to slide? Uh, that's because they're a little bit too big. So I think I'm going to, there's elastic in this top portion. I think I'm going to make the elastic, I think like a half an inch shorter, maybe an inch shorter, because if it's an, if it's a little shorter and a little tight, it'll actually sit places better. But I love the sleeves, they're awesome. One thing that I didn't do for the mock-up that I'm going to just 
know that I'm going to do. So this that you see here is actually just going to be the organza layer. And then I'm going to do the bobbin net layer is actually going to be an inch longer from top to bottom. So it's going to be the same exact pattern piece. It's just going to be an inch taller so that it'll be a little poofier so that they're not flat lined. They're actually two like pattern pieces. So it'll be like a top. I don't know how to denote it, but that's my idea for that. For this in the front, I, I did put the petticoat on to see, and I think I'm going to add a half an inch to all of the bottom pieces. Um, I'll turn around in a second and talk about the back because there's some stuff going on back there. But I think I'm gonna add a half an inch to all of these, and I think the top, if I fold this down like a solid, like half an inch, I think it, I think it sits fine, but I also don't like mind adding a quarter of an inch to the top just to kind of make sure that when it does fold and there's piping and everything, because there's also going to be lace behind this, that it, like, we don't expose this, like, white corset, but that it also doesn't, like, um, I don't know if you can see, it, it gaps just a bit, and that, again, can be fixed from just a simple seam right there. Something else that's going to get fixed is all of this wrinkling when I have boning and cotill in the support of the, the bodice. The, all of this wrinkling is just going to straighten out. Uh, the bobinet will help do that too. My question at this point, and I need to like kind of figure it out maybe today or tomorrow, is how to pull the bobinet pattern from these front pieces. So when I take this apart, I need to do it strategically so that I can get a full front piece, which is gonna be literally from this side here. All of this is gonna have to get laid flat and I'm gonna have to make the bobbin net piece like that because that's kind of how it is on Broadway, and then the back piece. And then the back piece has to be two separate pieces because I have to have the lap, which goes over the zipper, and then also the zipper. So now let's talk about the back, which is not as cute as the front, let's be honest. So the first issue which we can fix with boning is that the zipper um, buckles right here, you can see. And I think that, again, with like cotill and boning, everything is gonna kind of smooth out a little bit better. Um, the other thing is this pattern piece right here needs to get quite a bit longer because I had to do the, the kinds of modifications that I had to do. I took this whole back panel out on each side and replaced it knowing the information I had from the, basically I was sewing so many seams in this back because it was, that's how big it was that I had to like just take that back seam out and like trim everything down and like. It just was a mess. So anyway, I think I got it figured out. Like I said, I am going to take this apart and get as much of this as I can transferred to bobbin net and then, uh, or transferred to one pattern piece that will be the bobbin net pattern piece. I'm so worried about these curves though. Like I'm gonna be very honest with you. I don't know how this piece is going to lay flat for bobbin net, but like clearly they do it in the pictures, so I don't know. But also something that I know we like haven't really considered yet that we will start to consider here in a little bit, not like in this video, is the collar. There will be a strap connected to like right here or even like closer to the sleeve that will come up and like to connect and be the little like collar that she has. We're not gonna worry about that today, but that is something that I have to think about in the construction process. There is piping on the top and the bottom. There is a ruffle on the top. It's flat lined with cotill. It has um, a couple um, bumper bones, but it also has boning. And then it also has some elastic sewn in uh, up here, which we're not even, it's hand stitched in, so we're not gonna worry too much about it and because that's part of the rigging. We're not gonna worry about that too much until we get to the skirt done because the elastic is gonna connect to the waistband of the skirt and it's gonna allow the distribution of the weight of the skirt to go from the waistband, which will be right here, 
but that it, it'll also hold it some right here at the ribs. So we will kind of work on that a little bit later down the line. Those are actually part of the finishings and I'm probably gonna do a whole video just on the rigging, um, which will be lots of little itty bitty things that help rig the whole dress together. But I think that we have a very successful mock-up. Again, like I said, these need to be just, I'm gonna do a full inch, I'm gonna, it's elastic. And like you can see this elastic is, it's pretty good. So I can take an inch off of it and not have issues. Whew, it's a lot of talking. Okay, so I guess let's move to the bobbinet embroidery stuff and um, take this apart. Yeah, let's let's do some things. Cool. <laughs> All right, so right now I am about to cut these pieces, not cut them out, but like I'm going to um, baste them into my bobbinet. I think I'll have enough to do the entire bodice. Uh, today I am doing my live stream on decorating the bot. We're gonna start with the bodice front. So my plan is to basically baste around this onto the bobbinet and then cut out a piece that we know will fit in the loom and then figure out, okay, like what, is going to be the design. So I definitely know that I'm going to do a basting stitch around this and around this um, so that I know like, okay, this is kind of where the seam is, but like we're going to use this to kind of help mold all of it in. But then I'm going to draw like the design lines for this bodice front of how I want the sequins to be filled in. And we're going to work on filling it in first and then what, cause there's glitter like sporadically everywhere on it. We're going to worry about that stuff kind of like once the fill is done. Then I'm also going live on Instagram today to take these apart so that I can scavenge for these sequins. Um, so yeah, this one is the sleeve pattern a little bit longer, like taller, so that it is a little puffier so that I can't, so we'll do, so we're just gonna go one by one. I think today I'll only get like this much done, but I wanna get this and that transferred to bobbinet because I'm leaving for the beach next week and I plan to bring my loom so like I can work on pieces and if I just have this all prepped, all I have to do is take a piece off, put on a new piece and get going on sequining in theory, right? So that's the goal today. Um, hopefully I can get like this at a pretty, 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 at a pretty good state today. All right, so that is it for this week's bodice making video. I don't know how many videos I will be breaking up the bodice into, but I can tell you for sure that the next bodice video will be a construction video of how I'm gonna be constructing it from the inside out. So that means that it might be a couple weeks cause I still have to do all of the embroidery like the, tool, the uh, tambour embroidery with the sequins on the bodice still. So it, it may be a little bit of time before I do a bodice another bodice video just because it takes quite a lot of time to, to do these sequins. Um, but yeah, I'm very excited. I really like the shape of this. I really like where this project is going. Um, I'm pretty thankful that I have taken it a little bit slower than I initially planned because it's allowed me to take the time to really sit on the information and like do more research 
I have found that I keep coming back to the research element and like just searching more and deeper and harder for answers on some of the things like like materials used and whatnot. So yeah, next week's video is going to be on Ariel's sequin sparkly dress that she wears coming out of the water at the end of The Little Mermaid. I wore that at Planet Comic Con la a week ago and I have been waiting to film a fancy fun reveal for you all at the beach next week while I am there. The next live stream for Glinda is also going to be on June 1st. It is a Wednesday, so mark your calendars. I don't have a time yet, but I will make sure to have an announcement on the community tab as well as my Instagram where I share daily information about Glinda, about like my life, my dog, everything. So check that out. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say one more time, thank you all seriously so much for your support and your encouragement on this project. I honestly can't, like, I don't think that I would be able to stay attentive on this project as much without you all here cheering me on. So it really does mean the world to me. I don't do well with long long, very long in-depth projects that make me feel like I'm not getting anything done. So you all have been really making this easier for me, especially those of you that came to my booth at Planet Comic Con. Thank you so much for chatting with me about tamper embroidery and this gown. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, on that note, I will be at MomoCon here in Atlanta at the end of the month. It's over Memorial Day weekend. I am judging the cosplay contest and I will also be bringing my loom. So if anybody would like a demo or um, like to see how I plan, how I am making this dress or any of that, please come to my booth. It's going to be fun. My best friend, Alexandra Lee Studios, will be booking photo shoots. If I remember while I'm editing this video, I will link her form to photo uh, to shoot with her down below. So if you are interested in doing a photo shoot with Alex, she is honestly the best to work with. If you've never done a photo shoot before, she's got you. If you've done 5 million photo shoots before, she's got you. She's great. Um, so yeah, MomoCon is the next stop. I'll share more conventions that I will be guesting at as I go through the ones that I I kind of try to keep things um, what's next so that I can <laughs> stay focused. Um, but yeah, so thank you all seriously so much. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up below. It actually has a huge impact on whether or not YouTube is going to share this video with other people. And if you would also just like to tell me if you have any fun vacation plans this summer, I'm headed to the beach for a week. I am bringing my loom. Maybe I will do like a fun little series on Instagram where I'm like, silly places, I brought my hand sewing because a lot of you commented on my hand sewing at the brewery last week and like, I didn't intend for that, but I was like, oh, it's, it's like homebrew day, like let's go. Toby wanted to go and I brought, <laughs> I brought my hand sewing. So maybe I'll do a fun series there. But uh, yeah, let me know where you're going on vacation down below. I'm going to the beach next week and then um, subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all next week with another upload. Cause guess what? I don't know. We're just, we got another upload. Okay, goodbye now. <laughs>